Hi, I'm Jessica, and when I'm not drinking all the coffee, watching Razorback sports, or hanging out with my family of boys, it's my passion to help elementary music teachers just like you find your unique teaching style. My goal with this podcast is to share helpful tips, strategies, and to give you the motivation you need to gain momentum in your teaching so you can continue being the music teacher rock star you already are. Hey everyone, this is episode 16 of the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast, and this lesson comes directly from the Elementary Music Teacher Blueprint course, which you can find at harmonymembership.teachable.com. It is sold separately from the Harmony membership, and so you can purchase it at any time, or you can purchase it after you enroll in the Harmony membership as an upsell, and you get a huge discount from purchasing after you purchase the membership site. But anyways, this lesson comes directly from the Blueprint course, which contains 20 lessons, video lessons, as well as they have slides that are included in the lessons and you get printable worksheets to go along with each lesson as well. These 20 lessons take you through everything you need to know to successfully teach elementary music. And so this, like I said, lesson comes directly from the course and you get it for free by just listening to the podcast today. So happy listening and I hope you get something from this episode. Lesson seven, classroom instruments. In this lesson, we'll discuss rhythm instruments, pitched instruments, and how to use instruments in the classroom. Okay, so rhythm instruments. Honestly, the only ones you will have is drums and small rhythm instruments. Are you mind blown? Okay. So for drums, what I mean is tubanos and jambes, and then you can have hand drums also. And Remo is a brand I really recommend. They're a good brand. And then there's some other brands out there too, but Remo is a good brand. And then for the small rhythm instruments, the ones you're going to probably have in your classroom would be rhythm sticks, maracas, wood blocks, sand blocks, finger cymbals, tambourines. I mentioned a hand drum and then guiros. So for pitched instruments, the ones you'll have or might have are xylophones, metallophones, and glockenspiels, boom whackers, and then keyboards, which are optional. Um, My classroom just had keyboards. That was just something which for me was awesome because I am a piano player. So um, a lot of times there's sets that come. The xylophones, metallophones, and glockenspiels will come in sets. And it really does save money. And like I said, you can find links to ones I recommend on my website. And um, yeah, so I would recommend probably having two to three xylophones, and then it usually comes with two to three metallophones and about three to five glockenspiels. And that's a good amount to have. That's something you want to work up to because they are they are very expensive. And then boom whackers, um, you can also order the boom whackers in a set of an octave, and then they also come with octave caps. That's an optional thing. And then keyboards, if you have them, You can use them as a class set, but if you do that, there's not much room for anything else. But you can also just set up a few keyboards and use them in centers or teach them. It's totally up to you. How to use instruments in the classrooms. Okay, so obviously in songs, there's going to be times where you teach a song and then you say, okay, we need to add this instrument part. Um, I need, you know, Amy and Wes to go to the xylophones, and this is the part you're going to play. So sometimes what you're going to do is you're going to only send a few students to an instrument part, or you teach the whole class an instrument part after a song, or you have some students on, let's say, the xylophones and some on rhythm instruments, and then they can switch parts. You're going to use, like I said, as a class, you're going to, you may have a day where instead of teaching singing, you're really just working on rhythm instruments. And so you do a whole activity with rhythm instruments, and then they can rotate parts. And then you'll use um, rhythm instruments in centers, and we will talk about centers later. And so I want to talk to you about when you use, well, like I said, we'll mention, I'll talk more about centers in another lesson. But I want to go back to how to use them as a class. When you do rotate instruments, you're going to have a lot of times students sit in rows. 
So maybe you have the drums in the back and then, I don't know, rhythm sticks. And then you're going to have um, maracas. And then in the front row, maybe, I don't know, boom whackers. And so you teach them each a part. And then when you play, for instance, a rhythm on a drum, they rotate forward. And then the front row would walk to the back. And then when you're done playing the rhythm, all of the kids should be at their instrument, if that makes sense. And so if they're in there, so they, to cut down on arguing about what instrument they get, basically, if they were in seat one in the front row, they're going to be on seat one in the back row. Okay. And yeah, so then students need to take turns also. And so you can remind them, hey, you had the biggest drum last time. It's, you know, little Bobby's turn. So those are ways to handle those conflicts. Okay, go ahead and fill out your worksheet and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you so much for listening in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, I would love for you to review the show and leave a rating on iTunes. To find out more about how I can help you gain momentum in your elementary music teaching career, head to thedomesticmusician.com where you'll find free downloads, courses, the blog, and so much more. Continue teaching music and never doubt the impact you're making each and every day in the lives of your students.